Hello and uh, welcome to my channel here, uh, the Jewish Watchmaker, uh, right in the middle of Israel at the time of uh, Hanukkah and uh, hopefully uh, with this video we're going to be looking at how we can uh, clean our watches, uh, a realistic approach uh, to the watchmaker who doesn't have that much money. Let the fun and games begin. Well, uh, one of the uh, problems, of course, with uh, watchmaking is that everything is so darned expensive. Uh, the aspect of uh, cleaning the watch um, through a, usually maybe a three or a four step process, uh, beginning with some kind of a degreasing uh, sort of uh, cleaning fluid, uh, probably which in my case is going to be something like lighter fluid, uh, and then uh, a rinse and uh, in possibly in water, distilled water, and then uh, with a final uh, isopropyl alcohol to get rid of the uh, water and hopefully that will be uh, sufficient uh, using uh, in a typical sort of uh, watch cleaning machine uh, to you know provide the, your, part, uh, your parts to become uh, very nice and clean. Uh, the problem with uh, such a thing of course is that the um, they're so expensive. So here we have a couple of examples from uh, Elmer there, which is similar to uh, other sort of what you might call more traditional type of uh, cleaning machines. A staggering uh, two thousand pounds plus uh, for something like that for a, a three jar, uh, no three jars and a, and a drying chamber uh, option there for two thousand. And then up in the top right. You can up it an even further level until you're prepared to dash and pay out of over uh, four thousand uh, pounds for this more sophisticated uh, setup, which I believe has uh, also a sonic cleaning cleaning option um, in the, in there as well. So here's another example here on the left of another uh, option again, round about two thousand. Uh, I don't really know what the difference between that and the other 2001 part from it looking a little bit more sort of like modern. Uh, the one in the top hand right hand corner is an incredible uh, £13,850 uh, option which has a vacuum something or other inside it which I presume uh, possibly takes all the fumes uh, out of uh, the process uh, so you're not going to end up poisoning yourself in some little room somewhere and uh, nobody uh, being able to find you for about uh, 50 years. Um, so anyway looking at these prices absolutely unbelievable uh, don't even think about it that's uh, that's what I would say. And so what I thought might have been a more uh, reasonable uh, option would be the uh, second hand route. So I looked on the eBay and looked at uh, this L a few LNR uh, models for comparison. This one looks in fairly decent condition and it looks like it could work but still it's five hundred and ninety five uh, dollars and uh, I think uh, and it says also it doesn't ship to where I am as well because of the uh, politics I don't know maybe, maybe some uh, people are not too happy about selling uh, selling things to uh, Jews or Israelis and uh, plus the fact uh, probably it will be about that much again to actually ship it in terms of if it, if it was possible to get shipped uh, and also uh, anything over $75 incurs something like a 30% uh, tax on it so again this is a absolutely uh, out of the, un an un totally unreasonable uh, option if uh, I want to uh, engage in some kind of a a cleaning uh, service that uh, that could be provided uh, through uh, uh, mechanized uh, means of uh, cleaning watches. So in uh, in greater detail I think it's for the same no this is for another LNR type of machine and you can see here it's uh, in not such good condition uh, looking at the cable that goes into it and looks like that you know uh, I think you would have to use something like a welding mask before I even sort of trying to switch something this uh, this thing on because I'm not sure how good it would work electrically. Uh, the total when I've added it up with the price and the taxes and the import again is well over a thousand dollars which uh, you could buy 
uh, a new one for that much. Um, and again, not really sure whether this thing would actually work. It, uh, to be honest, it looks like it's been uh, dragged from uh, from the back of a motorbike for about a quarter of a mile and uh, through a farmer's field. And uh, you know, I would imagine uh, buying something like this, you would probably have to spend probably just as much uh, trying to get the thing uh, at least uh, working or looking in some uh, you know where you're not going to end up like electrocuting yourself or something like that. So the second hand uh, option uh, just didn't seem uh, reasonable at all. So here you can see the uh, <laughs> jar arrangement uh, for the previous machine that works out over a thousand dollars. You can see the few of the jars are missing. It uh, looks like they've even used, a, there's a, even a peanut butter jar there and the, with the yellow lid uh, over there on the right hand side. It's in a pretty uh, grim state. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's going to need a lot of work and effort. So if you're, gonna, you're not really happy with the jars of this model, then uh, you want to get the original L&R jars, then uh, you're talking about, again, $165 uh, for four of them, which is, uh, well, absolutely incredible. And of course, then the tax on that and everything. So again, the second-hand route uh, seemed uh, just not viable at all. Okay, so uh, faced with the challenge, and I always like challenges, I had to go back to the uh, the uh, origins of my uh, existence, and uh, that's always been a case of uh, trying to uh, make ends meet and come up with something that maybe is uh, just as good um, as the as the real thing. Um, I think I should really get a blue Peter badge for this. Um, basically, I came up with the idea of fitting a um, soup and herb strainer basket which is detachable which has a lid that's a detachable and um, connecting the lid to a, a to a spindle and then to a coupling and then a coupling uh, to a mortar with a gearbox and uh, the mortar and the uh, gearbox and uh, is mounted to the lid of the jar so I can basically um, you know take the the whole unit out uh, with the basket remove the basket from the uh, from the jar uh, take the take the lid off uh, fill the uh, basket up with the items that I want to clean and then I can clip the basket back onto the jar onto the onto the uh, lid of the uh, of the sort of the caged uh, caged uh, basket that's there and then uh, put the whole thing uh, on top of the uh, onto the on top of the jar and basically rather than screwing the lid uh, I would screw the jar uh, onto the lid and uh, and so that's so this is like a one of my sort of basic first time uh, arrangements of uh, of coming up with the idea so hopefully uh, in the next slide I'll show you some uh, still photographs of uh, of the actual uh, thing that I made and then some video action Okay, so this is a basically a still a photo of the actual, uh, so the reality of uh, the drawing that I made here without the jar. Uh, at the bottom, you can see the uh, cage, the spice and the herb cage that I bought, uh, which has a lid uh, on the top and some clasps that uh, clasp the lid on. Uh, the spindle that goes uh, that connects to the uh, the lid of the cage jar, uh, the cage bit, uh, into a uh, coupling. And then on top of the the jar lid is the uh, the mortar and the gearbox. So that's uh, that's it uh, fastened. You'll notice here on the left hand side, I've also got a 12 volt um, fan, which I got from uh, some for, from a some some kind of a cooling fan from some equipment. That's 12 volt. Uh, and again, uh, hopefully with that stage is that when uh, when I come to the point where I want to dry the parts after the uh, after be doing the alcohol uh, phase, uh, the the blower will be able to blow the uh, the parts dry. Uh, possibly even uh, I could uh, add an extra feature by uh, just using a hair dryer uh, and have this uh, thing uh, spinning round uh, and the uh, circulation from the fan on the left and also uh, expose you to warm air. Uh, from the hairdryer and I think that will probably do uh, and do me quite well Okay, so here is the uh, with back with the, the jar on so you imagine now we've got the liquid in the jar 
and we fasten the lid uh, well by basically turning the jar rather than the uh, rather than the lid of the jar so that's it uh, uh, fully assembled and uh, with this uh, photograph you can see that the uh, I've just slightly offset the lid of the uh, uh, the cage uh, container to one side and to show the uh, spice and the you know the the holy uh, the holy container there that's going to you know we place the 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 watch parts in uh, saying that you know I will probably I, I am going to put uh, I've got some smaller baskets for the smaller parts which I'm going to put in because uh, you know uh, the mesh on this particular container is good for in terms of the uh, water or the uh, alcohol or the cleaner going through and getting into getting to where the parts are but um, it's um, it's too big because some of the screws are very very small uh, in the watch movement so uh, I'm going to put uh, finer mesh a little smaller containers uh, for the uh, for this process and I can load all those into this into this jar and uh, and begin uh, the process of uh, hopefully cleaning uh, cleaning my watch parts okay so this is the uh, setup for the um, motorized uh, washing machine I uh, hopefully show you some still photographs of this maybe this is the uh, motor attached uh, to a rail of a, of a drawer so I can move the item in and out and uh, on the top is the DC motor 500 revs per minute this is the gearbox this is the coupling that couples through and uh, the basket which is attached to it. I'll show more details of that below on the next slide and then what I can do then is fasten the fasten the jar which has of course got the liquid in but it doesn't have any liquid at the moment onto the stand. The connection goes up uh, into the control box which I've just roughly wired in uh, and that basically receives an input from a uh, pulse width uh, modulator um, device and receives the power supply um, from, uh, from a DC power supply. I don't know whether they can see it down here or not, but anyway, it receives this from a, a DC power supply. I'm going to try and lift it up so you can see it. Maybe that's the DC power supply, which is, which is uh, 12 volts and um, I think it's capable of producing about 30 amps so what I can do then is on the this is the left hand side this is for the motor control future plans on the right hand side is a variable voltage supplier which I can use for hopefully for plating, plating uh, and things like that but that's in the still in the process of uh, being done so basically uh, and what I have is basically this is the speed control dial uh, this is a um, reverse and forward and reverse action on the uh, jar in the middle smooth the cable a little bit and hopefully you can see this thing uh, running as I switch it on you can see that I can twirl the basket round um, and that's on quite a low spin and increase it of course and you can see there is a bit of a wobble issue I think that's because the shaft doesn't fit properly on the coupling as well as it could do, maybe not central, but I think for probably for this sort of speed is something that we will be using. Now I'm using the 550 revs per minute. That's the revolutions outside of the of the gearbox according to the instructions. So I've got the ability to go say one way, and then with this switch, I can switch it, turns off, and then it'll go and it'll reverse the other way. So that's the that's the so that this is the proof of, proof of uh, concept uh, film and of course I would fill the uh, the fill the um, the uh, jar up with liquid cleaning fluid or uh, alcohol. I've got three more of these uh, jars and in anticipation of a future success uh, with this, I've got a um, timer circuit that basically will allow me to do basically perform the function of uh, forward, uh, forwarding, stopping and reversing 
uh, the motor uh, with, without the switch in this case but instead uh, using a, a timer which is programmable so I can do so many seconds in one direction stop and then so many, so, so many directions in the other um, and then further on to that uh, I'm planning to uh, use a smaller jar maybe and um, a smaller jar with a smaller basket and so that the jar will fit here in the ultrasonic cleaner so I can have the possibility of rotating and sonic cleaning uh, at the same time so that's what it is okay well uh, that's it folks uh, I wish everybody uh, a happy uh, new year happy Hanukkah um, and uh, Whatever faith you have or no faith, uh, may this uh, year uh, be uh, a source of blessing to everyone. And uh, I'm looking forward to posting my next video. Hopefully I can actually get around to doing some uh, disassembly, uh, cleaning and uh, reassembly uh, of, uh, of uh, my watches, which uh, I have quite a few now. And uh, well, hopefully it'll be a le learning experience for you. You'll be able to learn from mistakes and uh, <laughs> well I wish you all the best and uh, I hope you enjoy the uh, this little video that I made